Peter Jackson's King Kong is one of my favourite monster movies, with its epic action scenes, beautiful score and intense atmosphere that gave me the heebie-jeebies as a young child, thanks to the deadly, prehistoric animals and the natives that inhabited the island. This alone sounds great for a potential video game, and the folks at Ubisoft did just that, and in 2005 the world was graced with Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. Mouthful, I know. Since I assume most of you know the story of King Kong, I will give a brief summary of the story. Much like the movie, the film follows filmmaker Carl Denham, Jack Driscoll, and actor Anne Darrow, and the crew of the Venture, who discover the mysterious Skull Island for Carl's next big film. Shortly after arriving on the island, the gang soon encounter the dangerous creatures of Skull Island, and after Jack and Anne are separated from Carl and Mr. Hayes, the two are then later captured by the natives and Anne being offered as a sacrifice to the one and only King Kong. Once you are freed by Carl, it is up to you and the rest of the crew to save Anne and bring her safely back to the venture, while battling the rest of the dangerous creatures along the journey. The story is nothing special, but the movie itself had a pretty simple story with some interesting characters that you do end up caring about, and while the game doesn't flesh out these characters compared to its film counterpart, the game is more of an expansion to the film, with a lot of the situations you end up in being cut content from the movie. Not great, but the gameplay more than makes up for it. Speaking of which... One of the most interesting parts about King Kong is the shift from different perspectives. You'll be swapping from different gameplay styles. For Jack's gameplay, the game is a first person survival game with a focus on shooting, light puzzle solving and teamwork, while Kong's gameplay is a button mash and beat em up game. When playing as Jack, you can come across many different weapons along the way, such as pistols, shotguns, sniper rifles and machine gun, with a lot of these weapons have scarce ammo and most of the time you'll be using spears and bones sprinkled around the island to defend yourself, but there's a catch to these two different spear types. Spears left over by the natives deal a lot of damage, but at the cost of short durability, and the bone spears deal less damage but last a lot longer so you need to be strategic and plan out attacks otherwise you'll be dead faster than King Kong getting shot by planes. Since Jack is no doom guy or master chief he can die really easy so you have to be careful otherwise you'll be dead with a generous number of two hits. Wonderful. But when you come across the T-Rex and get hit by it later on in the game it's all over. When hit the screen will flash red with some intense music and everyone enables echo mode in their voice and scream your name. But dying isn't the only problem you'll be facing. Since there are other people fighting alongside you, they are also prone to attack as well, so you must protect them otherwise you have to start at the checkpoint. This definitely increases the tension, but considering the AI for these guys are as dumb as rocks, you'll be spending more time saving them than looking after your sorry ass. Guns when acquired are incredibly fun to use, but most of the powerful ones are the shotgun and tommy gun. Both are great for clearing hordes of enemies to give you some breathing room and generally feel good playing, whereas the pistol and sniper rifle are not as satisfying in my opinion. You may have noticed that during the gameplay that there is no HUD, but that was because the developers wanted you to feel more immersed into the world and so that you could experience all of the situations through Jack's eyes without a health or ammo counter cluttering the screen. To check on ammo you have to press the B button and Jack will call out on how much ammo he has left which is something you don't see in all shooters nowadays and it's a damn shame because it's a unique feature and was sort of a new thing for the time. However controlling Jack can be pretty stiff for the first few minutes of playtime and the look sensitivity is really awkward added on by a bizarre field of view. These aren't game or immersion breaking but this does add a ne negative effect on the fluidity of the controls and the gameplay but overall Jack's portion of the game is pretty good. With that all being said, let's talk about Kong's gameplay. Throughout different levels of the game you will take control of Kong and this is where the gameplay suffers for me. For most of the time you'll be matching the same button and making the same attack animations over and over again with no variety whatsoever and even though there's a special attack called Fury which you can enable by mashing the Y button which does increase damage. Kong's combat becomes really repetitive really quickly and while in combat you have to look out for your partner Anne much like Jack's portion but considering how powerful you are she isn't much of an annoyance unless there's a level where you have to save her from some batterer T-Rex. When not in combat you're doing the most basic platforming I've seen a game offer and much like the combat itself 
it can get really repetitive with nothing to separate itself from other platformers and the controls are awkward which can result in unfair deaths due to Kong not grabbing vines like a dumbass. Despite all I have said I will say that it is fun smashing in a T-Rex head and the final level where you have to swap down police cars and planes at the night in New York City is a lot of fun but there's no replay value whatsoever or any sense of accomplishment in his levels despite the satisfaction that some levels can offer which is a disappointment considering the game is all about King Kong. If they added more combos and more fluid combat similar to Devil May Cry or the Arkham game but much slower due to Kong's physique then it would have added a lot more replayability and variety. I used to love these levels when I was a kid but growing up now and playing so many other games with similar style but better execution, I have to say that Kong's levels are the weakest aspects of the game, despite a few good moments sprinkled in. Graphics are definitely really well done, especially when it comes to the textures on the walls, the weather effects and the enemies, but the human character models just haven't aged well. And even Kong's model doesn't look that good, with little to no facial expressions whatsoever. Just to go on a personal note, I've always found the character models in the original Xbox version to be a lot more detailed and a lot more accurate to the actors they were based off. Might just be me, but I've always preferred that version compared to the 360 version. Even though I have my complaints with Jack and Kong's gameplay, lack of replayability, the game is still a blast to play and was a great time for me when I was a small kid. Because of the great atmosphere and music and some good aspects of the gameplay from the two playable characters, I do highly recommend checking it out and even more if you're a Kong fan looking for a good Kong game, even if the game itself hasn't aged that well in some areas. You can get it pretty cheap nowadays and it's even backwards compatible on the Xbox One, so go at it and have some fun. Hope you enjoyed this video folks, sorry for the long wait, but like I said, you know, I do want to take some time with these reviews and not rush them out, so I appreciate all of your waiting and a lot of the asking on my Twitters about how the video is going, so I really appreciate that, thank you all, thank you very much. Please subscribe for more content and hey, maybe give it a thumbs up and share with some friends. This is me, Baggy Spartan 117 kicking ass in outer space.